Welcome back, everybody, to Imperion Galactic Survival on version 1.0. This is the Getting Started tutorial series, and I am an old guy gaming. And in this episode, we are going to see if we can find ourselves some cobalt. If you guys watched the last episode, you will know that we went to make our drill, and we discovered uh, that we didn't have cobalt for these energy matrixes, which are needed for the drill itself. So... Uh, a couple things before we get started, though, uh, with that. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you do, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't take any effort, it doesn't cost you anything, and it does help the channel. If you don't like what you see, please consider leaving a constructive and factual comment and help me to improve. Okay, we got that out of the way. Uh, a couple things from the last episode. I mentioned that you want to, you know, watch your CPU and your power when you add new stuff to the base. And we didn't actually look at that, so let's look at that now. So we... Uh, open up the P menu, and you can, you can actually look at it right here. So we can see that we're still well under the limit um, um, of our CPU usage here. And our power consumption, uh, you know, we have 17, basically we have 17 hours and 11 minutes left. So we're still fine on the power too at this point. But do keep in mind that the constructor, it will, it will draw a little bit of power just sitting here idle but it'll draw quite a bit more when you're actually using it so you know if i for example queued up a whole bunch of stuff and then it went out and about looking for oh you know say cobalt or something like that i could potentially come back to my base and find that the power is all out so just be aware of those things uh, the best thing i can tell you is just keep an eye on it and compensate if you need to and how do i do that well there's two things you have to consider in terms of power uh, for the base you have to make sure you have enough capacity in the fuel tank. So very often you you may just need to add larger or more fuel tanks. Um, and you also want to make sure that you don't ever overload your generator. Because if you overload your generator, guess what it can do? Kaboom. All right. So just pay attention to that. Each time you add anything significant to the base, take a look at your power. Take a look at your CPU. Make sure everything is still adequate before you continue on or make adjustments as needed. All right, now um, let's go into here, and we need to make the charges for our multi-tool. We made the multi-tool in the last episode, but we didn't actually make the charges, so we need to do that. Notice that the output count on these guys is three, whereas the charges for the drill, the output count is five. Don't ask me why. It's just the way the game works. So I'm going to queue up two of these, so I have a total of six. I don't want to go overboard because, you know, we don't have an abundance of resources. So we do want to still be, um, you know, careful about not overdoing things at this point in our playthrough here. Okay, so it's going to make a total of six charges for us. That's going to be perfect for what we need to do next. Let's go to our output, and we'll grab those charges and put them in our own inventory, and then we will load up the multi-tool. Okay, we, we learned a couple episodes ago that the multi-tool is better than the survival tool, pretty much in every way. The, only th the one thing the survival survival tool can do that the multi-tool cannot is um, use, be used as a weapon. However, we don't need to use the survival tool as a weapon because we've got assault rifles, shotguns, and sniper rifles now uh, as our weapons. Uh, this thing will salvage better. Well, let me let me talk about that in just a second. It'll salvage better and it'll you can pick stuff up with it, whereas you can't with the survival tool. You can repair with this whereas you can't with the survival tube. Uh, so those are important things. Plus you can do some other things like, you know, rotate uh, blocks or change transparency of windows. You can downgrade or upgrade things with this, as well as salvage, retrieve blocks, and repair. So just a much, much more useful tool. Okay, so the question was asked to me in the comments about salvaging, how salvaging works. So let me just kind of give you the rundown of of salvaging here in Imperion in version 1.0. But before, you know, before we even talk about it, just know that if you hover your cursor over the salvage or over the multi-tool, it'll tell you what you're looking for here is the return factor. Notice it says the return factor on this guy is about 33%, give or take. Okay. What that means is you're only going to get 33% of the resources back that it took to manufacture whatever it is that you happen to be salvaging, whether that, you know, whether that's a block uh, or equipment or that sort of thing. In short, the, the T1 multi-tool really sucks for salvaging because you lose a lot of stuff. So what should you do instead? What you should do instead, if you can, is you should try and salvage um, whole blocks. You should use this retrieve blocks 
Notice it says return. Well, it says returns intact blocks for own structures. That's very important. In order for you to get a whole block every single time, you need to put a core down first. So if you if it's a base or a vessel or whatever that you've taken over, if the enemy's core or the original core exists, you've got to you've got to destroy that first. So just blow it up with your shotgun or your 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 C4 or whatever you have. And then, you know, it's always a good idea to carry a couple of extra cores around with you in your ship so that you can plop those down. And then you become the owner of that structure. And once you become the owner of that structure, then you can pick the blocks up whole. If I pick a block up whole, I obviously get all of the resources back that made that block because, hey, I've got the whole block. Makes sense, right? What do I do with that block? Well, it depends. Um, you can use it if you want to. So one thing I'll often do is in, in the early, you know, early to mid game, if I find something like say a medical bay, I'll pick that up whole, bring it back and plop it down on my base and use it. Okay. So one thing you can do is use it. Um, or what you can do is you can feed those blocks into the factory. And so you can queue up a ship. So let's just do like the Pharaoh here, just to show as an example, I send that to the factory. And then I can start putting these resources in this little box here. Now, if I put a block in this resource, a whole block, excuse me, in this um, square here, and that whole block consisted of, say, um, I don't know, you know, five, you know, 50 iron and, say, 20 titanium, when I put it in there, that's going to contribute 50 iron and 20 titanium to the two things in this list that require iron and titanium. It doesn't really matter if it's rods or plates or whatever, as long as it was originally made by titanium, it will apply towards this. The thing that's really useful about that, guys, is that I'm getting 100% back of the resources that that block was, you know, what that was used to make that block. Whereas if I go and just salvage it instead, with this tool in particular, I'm only going to get about 33% of those resources back. That's a huge, huge loss. So whenever possible, it's not always possible or practical, but whenever possible, retrieve whole blocks from anything you're salvaging and then either use that whole block or throw it into the factory. A third thing that you can do is that there is a machine in the game called a deconstructor. Um, and that is this guy right here. The deconstructor is kind of expensive to make. Um, the most expensive thing on this is 10 flux coils. But you know what? If you keep killing drones and keep going along, you will eventually, you know, loot 10 flux coils, if not be able to make them by the time you get ready to use this. The cool thing about the deconstructor is that just like the factory, it will also return 100% of the materials. Now, those of you who think that this thing will only return 80% of the materials. Go test it out in version 1.0 and let me know what you find out, okay? I tested that because I've, uh, you know, I've heard people think that this only returns 80%, but from my testing, it does appear that in version 1.0, you get 100% of the resources back on the deconstructor. So if you don't believe me, go test it out and then let me know what your findings are. The thing about the deconstructor though, guys, assuming you can make it and have it in your base, oh, by the way, it uses a hell of a lot of CPU too, so be, you know, uh, pay attention to that, is that you've got to get those blocks back to your base in order to put them inside the deconstructor. So you've got to make sure that you have a vessel that's capable of hauling that much weight and volume if your intention is to bring those blocks back um, and put them in the deconstructor in order to get their components and their, you know, their resources, okay? So it's a very useful and good thing to do, but it's really more of a mid to late game thing that you'll do because until you get to the mid or late game, you're probably not going to have a ship that's capable of hauling uh, all that stuff. And this is assuming, of course, you're using weight and volume, which I hope that you are, okay? If you're not using weight and volume, then it does matter. You can put 100,000 tons into your own inventory and the game doesn't care. Um, all right, so uh, where were we? Yeah, so just uh, the moral to that story is whenever possible, Make yourself a few extra cores. They're very inexpensive, you know, relatively speaking. So a core only, you know, those are the ingredients <laughs> um, that you see for the core. And that stuff's not really that expensive. You know, you just need a little iron, a little silicon, a little copper, and you can make several of these. So I usually have, I don't know, three or four just that I carry around in my ship with me so I can use them when I need to. Okay. Um, now, 
the tier two multi-tool, which we're not quite able to get yet. Let's look at that for a second. That's this guy. Um, notice that when I hover my cursor over the tier two multi-tool, it says it has a return factor of 66. Okay, so that means that you're going to get 66% of the original resources back when you use the tier two multi-tool. One thing the game does not tell you, however, is that at least I don't think it does, is that that only applies to large blocks. So that applies to blocks that are either attached to a base or a capital vessel. If you use the tier two multi-tool on small blocks, so if you're salvaging a small vessel or a hover vessel, then you will actually get 80% of the materials back. It does not appear to me from the testing that I've done in version 1.0 that the tier one multi-tool also gives you 80% back. I think that it may be used to, people think that it does, but go test that if you don't believe me and tell me what you find out, okay? But in my testing, it did not appear that I was getting 80% of the materials back when I used the tier one multi-tool on an HV or an SV, but I did see that I was getting 80% of the materials back when I used the T2 on an SV or an HV. So that's better. Uh, quite a bit better in fact but it's still not as good as getting whole blocks so again whenever possible put your own core down destroy the old core if it still exists put your own core down then get whole blocks if you cannot haul those whole blocks back to your base to use in your deconstructor or you're not planning on actually using them and remember when i say blocks i'm talking about actual blocks but i'm also talking about equipment too that you can salvage then feed that stuff into the factory um, I can really pick any ship that I want to, send it to the factory, and start feeding in. It doesn't mean I actually have to make that ship, uh, but it just lets me start putting stuff in the factory, and the factory will hang on to whatever you've put into it, and then you can actually switch to a different ship later on and apply everything that you've put into it uh, to that different ship. Okay, I think, guys, that covers Salvaging 101. Okay? Um, so... Now that we have gotten that out of the way, we need to go find cobalt. That is our prime directive for this episode, is we need to find some cobalt. But here's the thing. We're going to have to go into the ra irradiated zone. Well, there's two, th there's two ways we could do this, really, actually. We could go find the Polaris territory, which we have not found yet on this planet, I don't think. Well, actually, we have. It's probably this yellow area here, but their buildings are probably more up in this direction. And if we had some bank... We could buy cobalt from them. That's one way to do it. How do I make bank in the very early game? You really have a couple of options. You can either do the the quests, like the wildlife cam, which is a very good one and an easy one to do in the very early game. And each time you finish it, they'll give you 500 bank. Um, you can also do the same thing for the Talon. Uh, do their uh, pest control. Um, and you'll get you'll get 10 gold coins, which also e equates to 500 bank once you deposit it. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it, if you have enough resources, is you can actually make a bunch of tier one weapons. So if you go into the constructor uh, and just start making, you know, a few chainsaws, a few sniper rifles, a few assault rifles, maybe a couple of pistols, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe a couple of tier one multi tools, and then you can go sell those to the planet side trading station of the Polaris and make some money that way and then go buy cobalt. So that's that's an, one way to do it. Another way you can do it is you could actually go ahead and start doing some POIs, raiding some POIs, and you might find the cobalt in the loot, but you, you, you know, we're not quite ready to do that yet. We're not quite fully equipped uh, to do that yet. So it, even though it is one option, it's probably not the best option this early in the game. So our option then is that we're going to we're going to go back to that irradiated biome that we found in I think it was the last episode so where was that it was down, it's right here this little irradiated biome <clears throat> and we're going to find cobalt stones on the ground in there but remember I told you that place is really dangerous so before we do that we need to change out our cockpit so this is going to be our first look in this tutorial series at working with um, you know, hover vessels and so forth. I'm not going to get really deep into this right now. We will later, uh, but I'm just going to do some basic things so that we can equip ourselves to go uh, handle what we might find in that um, irradiated biome. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to 
since we have a an actual multi-tool now a real one what we can do is as long as we own this hover vessel how do i own it well you need to make sure that it's set to private when we first found the damaged hover bike it was set to public if it's set to public it means anybody can access it and it means also more importantly for this purpose that if we take anything at all off that hover bike we're probably not going to retrieve it as a whole block it's going to be broken down to its components but we just learned that if we own the device then we can retrieve full blocks with our multi-tool what i want to do specifically is i want to pull this open cockpit off of here and i want to place it back down as an enclosed cockpit because that is then going to provide some physical protection for me and it's going to provide some protection from the radiation that we're going to run into in the irradiated bio so i could make a new cockpit but why the hell do that if i just have one right here for the taken i just got to switch it out all right so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're on retrieve blocks and we're just going to zap this thing and notice that it put a whole cockpit into my inventory very cool now i don't have to make one i can just reuse it if i select it and i right click i've got a variety of different types of cockpits that i can actually use in this particular case, I am interested in something that's small enough to practically fit on this hover vessel. And just because I've done this a few times now, I know that the Cockpit 5 um, or Legacy Cockpit 5 are the ones that fit the best on this hover bike. If I hover my cursor over Cockpit 5, you'll notice that it tells me what the dimensions are. So it's, it's three blocks wide by two blocks high by four blocks deep. Okay. This is the smallest cockpit, the two, this one and this one, this is the same exact size, it's just a little bit different design um, that I can put on here. So the problem that I have now, though, is that I can't actually put it on here yet, or I could, but, I, you know, if I did, it would, it would look really weird. It wouldn't fit correctly. So before I actually place this cockpit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to change out a few blocks to get this to work. Um, I'm going to use my drone just because it'll work a little bit better for us to see what we're doing. Okay, so, um, in, because these blocks are kind of just crappy, you know, ruined steel blocks, there really isn't much of a purpose for me to, to take them off whole, even though I could. So I'm just going to salvage these because it's just not worth it to me, you know, to get these as whole blocks. But what I have to do is I have to make a four, I got, have to make four blocks deep in order to fit that because I, because we, we learned that that thing is four blocks deep. It's two blocks high and it's three blocks wide so we're fine on the height and the width but we need the depth so what we're going to do is we're just going to remove these and again i'm salvaging these and as opposed to picking them up whole because they're just not really going to do me any good as whole blocks now we also need to do something about this o2 tank because we're on a breathable atmosphere temperate planet we really just don't need this at all however if I did need it, I would pick this one up whole. I would switch to retrieve blocks. I would pick it up whole, and then I would reset it in this little slot right here, like so. Okay? Um, and we'll just go ahead and leave it there for now. But, you know, if I was doing this on the arid planet in particular, where I can't breathe, I do want an oxygen tank so that I can actually, you know, get oxygen from my vessel. Um, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my cockpit and I'm just going to make sure that it, it's, it's right down in the little groove there um, before I actually place it. And then I'm going to just click the left mouse button and boom, we've got ourselves a new enclosed cockpit on our little damaged hover bike here, which is still damaged. Okay, what that does for us guys is it allows us then to protect us from physical damage so incoming fire um and it will protect us from temperature and it will protect us from radiation which is really the most important reason why we're doing this right now all right now the next thing uh because we're going to go into a dangerous biome we might want to actually put some weaponry on this guy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back into the base here i'm going to look at my uh, tech tree here uh, to uh, under hover vessel in particular 
and in, I've got 126 points. So we got lots of points to play with here. So what I'm going to do is I need to learn an ammo controller and I need to learn the Gatling guns. Okay. Now I told you, I think in the last episode that once you learn a weapon, then you automatically unlock the, the ammo that that weapon requires, which in this case is 15 millimeter bullets. Okay. Um, so now we've done that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to my large constructor and I'm going to go ahead and queue up uh, two Gatling guns. So I'm going to select the hover vessel filter. But you know, one other thing I didn't show you guys, you can also directly type in here too. So if I directly type in here, um, Gatling, it'll bring up the Gatling guns. The only thing I'll tell you is be really careful when you do this because you just want to make sure that you're selecting the, the device for the proper vessel or base. In other words, there's two different types of hardened blocks. And if I just type hardened blocks, let's look at this right now. Um, hard. Oh, why isn't that? Hap oh, it's because I'm not on the right filter. All right. There's two different types of hardened blocks. So if I'm, if I'm just typing stuff in directly, that's fine. It's really actually quite efficient and fast, but just make sure you're paying attention and you don't queue up a thousand large blocks when you intended to queue up a thousand small blocks and vice versa. Okay. Little side note there for you. Okay. So we're interested in Gatling guns. So we can either click on hover vessel and then click on weapons and items. And there it is. Or like I showed you earlier, we could even just type Gatling and, and search it uh, for it. I want two of these. So I'm going to queue up two Gatling guns. And while this guy's making the guns, I'm going to go over to this guy and I'm going to make myself I'm make sure I'm on hover vessel, make sure that I'm on devices this time. And I'm going to go ahead and make myself a control, a container controller for ammo. I'm just going to make one of those. That's all I need for what we are going to do. I also need, excuse me, to queue up some ammunition. So 15 millimeter bullets. Notice that it says there's an output count of 100. So I think what I want to do is we're going to queue up a thousand. Okay. Um, we don't, we want to be careful that we don't queue up too many of these just because our little hover vessel out there is not capable of carrying a whole lot of weight. So we don't want to overdo it on the bullets. Okay. So while we're waiting for that, okay, this is just about ready to finish the first Gatling gun. Now let's go back out here and we need to figure out where we're going to put these guns. So what I usually like to do with the little hover bike is I like to put the guns just kind of down underneath. There's a burger. Uh, down underneath the uh, cockpit. So let's do this. Let's hop into the hover vessel and turn it on with the Y key. And let's just kind of get into a little bit more of a level spot. So just up here is probably good. And we're going to keep it on so it, it stays a little bit off the ground so we can get underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my multi-tool. And again, I don't really care about sal or, or about retrieving these particular blocks as whole blocks. So I'm just going to uh, remove that block there. And I'm going to have to... Let's take that block away too. But maybe we'll leave this little angled block on that side. And then we're going to need to do the same thing on this side. So let's pop that one off and that one off and that one off. So it looks like we're okay on both sides. So we need to find a spot, <clears throat> excuse me, for the ammo controller. And there's actually a little cavity right inside here that we could put that. Or we could even put it in the back too. Um, so what we'll do is, yeah, we'll put that inside of there. What I would probably also do at this point with this little hover vessel, guys, is I would probably add some more storage to it and probably try and, you know, replace the broken blocks with whole blocks. But we're going to work on all that stuff later. I don't want to, I don't want this episode to be completely focused on working on hover vessels. Just be patient we will get there. I'm just doing some minimal stuff now so that we're, because what we're doing is we're preparing to go into a hostile environment. Okay. So just bear with me on all that. Let's get back in here. 
Um, all right, where are we at? Okay, so looks like our guns are finished. So we're going to grab our Gatling guns and we're going to grab our ammo controller and we'll just connect to uh, to this so we can grab our ammunition itself when we're ready. Okay, so let's press T to get back to our personal menu and then I'm just going to slide these two right in here. Oh, you know what? I think we are going to have to actually remove these guys as well. Okay, now we should be able to slide the weapons right in these little slots that we made. There we go, look at that. Now we've got some armaments. Let's hop up in our drone F5 key so that we can get in here and we're just gonna kinda try and scooch this right back in that little pocket there. Oh, there we go, okay. So that puts the ammo controller. Now, if you're wondering, why is that called an ammo controller? It's called an ammo controller because um, you can connect to a controller several extensions and, and basically just expand its space. But, of course, you have to have room for the extensions. Again, we'll cover that later. Don't get too terribly hung up on that for the moment. Cool. So we got some weapons. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hop into our hover vessel with the F key. We're going to press the F4 key to access the wireless that is on our base. On this side, we're going to choose the damaged hover bike and the ammo controller. And on this side, we're going to choose, oh, you know what? We got to get closer whoop, to the base because we don't have a wireless on the hover vessel. Something we might fix later on. Okay, let's try this again. We're going to hit F4. Um, we're going to select the... Um, what in the hell is going on here? Okay, let's get out of here. There's the base. Um, I guess it wasn't letting me access it while I was in the enclosed cockpit. Okay, and we're going to go to the output. There's our ammunition. Uh, damage hover bike here. We're going to go to ammo controller, and then we're going to put all that ammunition in there. So that fills up almost all of it. And that, that's all we really need for now. Okay, so we've done that. We're going to get back into our cockpit with the F key, and we're going to select our Gatling guns down on our toolbar with the number one key or the mouse scroll wheel, and we're going to press R for reload. Once we do that, if you look um, down above the Gatling gun on the toolbar, you'll see like a, uh, a, like a blue meter. You'll see a picture of the ammunition that this weapon uses, the 15 millimeter bullet, You'll see a 600 and you'll see a 400, okay? And then you'll see a range. Let's talk a little bit about what all of that means. The, the number in parentheses is what is currently loaded in the weapon. The number to the left of that, the 600 in our case, is what is left in the controller, right? So if I go into my ammo controller, you'll notice that, oh, I'm sorry, I told you that exactly the other way around. 600 is what's loaded, 400 is what's left. Okay, so yeah, I just I just got that in reverse. So that kind of tells you what you're doing. Now, this little meter here will start to drop down as you expend ammo, and when that gets into the red, basically that means you need to reload as soon as possible. If you if you shoot all of the ammo completely down, then the game will reload for you automatically, but you know, um, don't m make sure you're not right in the middle of a big firefight when that happens as much as possible. Okay? The range this is telling me that I have 100 that, that these guns have 167 meters range. Range is going to vary depending upon atmospheric conditions. So one way to put that is that the range of a weapon is in space is its maximum range. So let's see. Let's go into um, let's go into our control panel. Let's select our devices and look at our Gatling gun. Okay, so notice it says max range 550 and current range 167. What that means is if I fired this weapon in space where there's no atmosphere, it could actually go all the way to, out to 550 meters. However, because I'm on a planet with atmosphere, um, I can only uh, this gun can only fire up to 167 meters. So that's going to change depending upon the environment that you're in, but it is something you definitely want to pay attention to 
because you don't want to start blasting your guns at a target that's 200 meters away on this particular planet. You're not going to hit it. You're just going to waste ammo. Okay? So, um, now we're going to do something else. Because we've added some more stuff to this vessel, it is ungrouped. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to auto-group all this stuff. Don't worry about this warning. I don't want to get into that right now. We'll talk about it later. Just auto-group it. And what that does now is it just kind of puts everything into a nice little group. And in this case, it groups our two uh, weapons together. One advantage to doing that is that, and we talked a little bit about this a few episodes back, is that if I have items in a group, I can power down that entire group with this little switch here. And you, you heard that little noise, that, that was basically the guns retracting, right? If you only have one type of weapon on the ship, you can do the same thing by just using the main turrets and weapon switch. However, you might be in a situation where you have different types of weapons on the ship and you might not want to disable all of them at the same time. In that case, it's useful to have those weapons in a group and then you can just power them down that group without powering down all of them. And there's even a, a, an easier way to do that using custom switches. But here again, we'll cover that later. We're not going to get into that right now. Now, another, another minor issue that we have right now is we're a little bit front end heavy now, as you can see. So notice that if I hit the O key, if I press the O key, we learned this a while ago too, it'll auto level me. But as soon as I take my finger off, see how it starts to dip down. That is not a big problem, it's a minor problem, we're not going to worry about it right now, but you do need to pay attention when you're, especially when you're working with small hover vessels like this, you have to make sure that you balance out the weight of the components that you're putting on the vessel, okay? The game gives you what are called mass blocks that are essentially like just a ballast, right? Just a weight that you can put um, on, say, the back end of this to try and balance it out. I would recommend when you're building a hover vessel, or in this case, you know, re, redoing it, that you try and balance stuff out with the actual components and minimize the use of the actual uh, ballast blocks. Only because, you know, it, it, you, it, it's better. It's always better to, to use actual components that you want on the, the vessel than a balance than the the uh, mass blocks because the mass blocks don't serve any other function other than trying to balance out your weight. So it's better to try and balance that weight out. Okay, I'm getting a little too far into the hover vessel stuff. Guys, do me a favor when you're watching this, don't ask me a shitload of questions about how to do hover vessels now, because we will cover that. I promise you we'll cover that. I just don't want to get into that right now. It's coming up. How did that happen? We got a little bit of damage on our base. Well, guess what? We've got ourselves a multi-tool and we can repair it. Awesome. I'm not even sure how that happened. That's weird. Okay, guys, I think we're about ready to head on out and see if we can find ourselves some uh, cobalt. So we have on our own person, let's see here. Oh, let's put this in the fridge and we'll put this steel that we got from salvaging those blocks into the input. Oh, you know, the one thing we should probably also do Let's take a look and see how our fuel is on this. So I'm going to get right up to it and press P. Hit manage and just go to the hover bikes inventory. So we have 12 biofuels. So we should be okay on fuel, but when we get back, we probably are going to want to put some more fuel in there. Um... Yeah, I'm going to leave that there. And the reason being is because we have very, very limited weight uh, on the hover vessel. So we should have plenty of fuel to get there back. Plus, we have a little extra in case we really needed it. Um, and we'll worry about that later. Excuse me. Okay. Now, before we leave the base, what I'm going to do is I'm either going to queue up some other stuff that I, that I need to make so it can be manufacturing while I'm out and about. However... If I don't have anything in particular that I want to make right this moment, um, it's best to power down your device. 
You can either do that by accessing the device directly and turning its power off, um, or you can do it from the P menu, go to devices, find whatever it is that you want to power down, and you can also power it down from here. I'll tell you what though, we actually could use some more projectile rounds, and we could use some more sniper rifle rounds, and for whatever reason, God only knows, I don't have any shotgun shells. What am I doing? Uh, I'm trying to do a tutorial, and I, I keep forgetting to do all this stuff. So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera here, and I'm just going to quickly make up um, some ammunition for, for, for our own personal weapons, because we might need them. Um, and then once I do that, I will meet you en route to... Oh, I don't want that many. I will meet you en route to that irradiated bio. All right, guys. Um, actually, we haven't left yet, as you can see. There's a couple more things I want to go over real quick. Um, the first is that because we're going into an irradiated biome, we're going to start to build up a little bit of body radiation. As long as we keep our body radiation below 1.0, we'll be fine. If, however we get to 1.0, I happen to have an anti-radiation pill um, that we looted, I believe we looted off of a Xerax uh, when we were shooting those Xerax in the last episode, that we can deal with that out in the field, okay? Um, I could also, if I wanted to take the time to do so, go out and find the resources, mushrooms and herbal leaves in particular, to make anti-radiation ointment. Um, so let's just talk really quickly about medical, um, you know, medical stuff here. All right. You basically have three levels of medical or of medicine that you can use out in the field. What do I mean by out in the field? Well, obviously when you're out and about. Um, but the reason I'm saying that specifically is that you can also get to a point where you can make what's called a medical or medical devices rather. So this will be available to us at level 10. And what this does is this actually heals you um, if you set it down as an actual medical device, or you can, with the right click menu, choose a variety of other types of medical stations that can, re, you know, that can um, cure you of all kinds of different diseases and stuff like that, which would include radiation. Uh, you know, radiation sickness and, and the various different things. But if you look here, you'll notice that the radiation ointment will will um, cure radiation burn, but that's all it will do. I can also get other problems with radiation. So the pill is the next level, and it can cure both radiation burn and radiation poisoning. And then the highest level are the syringes, and... This will cure radiating sickness, poison, and poisoning, and burn. Okay, so sickness is the is the worst of those three, and um, so I just wanted to kind of illustrate to you or show you that there's three different levels of medical. We happen to have the second level pill with us, and that we got off that Xerox, so we're good to go uh, with with just this. Now we're going to be careful. We're we're not likely going to get that you know that much radiation as long as we're careful while we're in that zone but we are prepared in case that does actually happen okay now there's one other thing that i want to do too before we leave and i want to go into the constructor i want to go into the decoration blocks and i want to make a a furnishing however we need some wood planks for that hmm let's grab some some of this wood here really quick I need a, a chainsaw. Do I have a chainsaw with me? I do. Whoops. Put that in our input. Now let's make some furnishings. Why are you making furnishings, do you ask? I'm glad you asked. The reason is, is because this is not just a bed, but it's actually several different types of furnishings, one of which is a shower. And guess what the shower does for you when you take it? Not only does it make you smell squeaky clean, but it also will remove body radiation that you have. So I'm going to grab the bed here, and let's, let's just pop that in this corner here. 
going to select the bed. Now, if I just put it down as an actual bed, which I could do, um, what the bed does is it instantly restores stamina and lets you sleep until morning. So it has the same effect that the tent does, but we're not really worried about that. What we want to do is we want to right click and we have all kinds of different cool things that we can select from. But what we're specifically after is the shower. Okay, and so we're going to select the shower. There's actually two types. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm going to select this shower, shower two. Okay, and then I'm just going to rotate it so it's, I guess, pointing that way. And we're going to set it down with the left mouse button. Now, if I come up to this, notice the tooltip. It says press F to use shower. Um, and then it tells us that, here, let's see, look at it again. It reduces radiation rest and restores normal temperature. So the other thing it'll do too is if you're too hot or too cold, it'll warm you up or cool you down. Uh, so really useful. So yeah, that. So what we're going to do when we get back from the radiator zone, we're probably going to have a few, a couple of points of radiation, and we're just going to take a shower when we get back, and that'll completely remove all of that from our body, and it'll make us smell nice and squeaky clean. Who doesn't want that? Okay, guys, we have um, 75 rounds of sniper. We've got 546 rounds of projectile and 88 rounds of shotgun shells. Um, I right before I came back, I made sure everything was loaded which it is, R key reloads. Um, I, you know what I think I'm going to do too? Let's leave this chainsaw here. We don't need to really take that with us. There Now, there's one more thing I want to do before we leave. I know I keep saying there's one more thing I want to do. There's one more thing I want to do. I'm terrible, aren't I? Let's go into here, and I'm going to grab... How much of this Promethium can I hold? I can hold all of it. Let's not take all of it. Let's take... Let's take 30 Prometheums. I still have out here the portable constructors. What I could do if I wanted to is I could use either the, the small constructor and or the large constructor to start making fuel packs for us out of this Promethean while we're out and about. That's fine, but the thing is, is that it takes energy to run these things. What's better is for you to always have, no matter what point you are in the game, early game, mid game, end game, always have a few portable constructors available to you. And what I can do then is I can use these to make the small Promethean packs. And it's absolutely free in terms of the energy it's required to make these things. So why not use it? Why, why use the energy of my base to make fuel when I can make it for free? So I'm just queuing up a bunch of these. I'm just doing a, a couple of control clicks. It's not going to make 600, but I'm just making sure that it has plenty to make until it runs out. Moral to the story here, use your portable constructors. Continue to use them even after you have the bigger constructors to make things for you because the energy required to make those things is free with these guys. True story. Um, I'm going to leave this stuff there for now. Okay, guys. I think we're done screwing around, even though it's been really important and informative screwing around. <laughs> At least I hope you guys think so. Uh, and we need to go ahead and get started uh, going to get our Prometheum. Now, we're, we're going to have to use Ye old Survival Tool one last time, because the whole point in why we're doing this is we're trying to get the stuff we need to make an, a real drill. So this will be our last time, hopefully, that we'll have to actually use the Survival Tool to mine anything. Let's take off. How's our food? Um, our food is fine, and we have 43 non-perishing energy bars sitting in our output because we did not take them out. So we are fine on food. I am going to take the bandages out because those don't spile and put them down here in case we need them. And hey, guess what? I remembered to turn my shoulder light on on my suit for this episode like I forgot to do in the last episode. Can't take me anywhere. All right, guys, we are heading out to the irradiated biome. Um, one thing that, where is that at? Okay, it's actually gonna be quicker for us to go to the east, to the southeast, than it is for us to go to the west just because of where this is located. What I wanna do though is I'm gonna go ahead and just put a temporary waypoint and we're gonna just call this, um, I'm just gonna call this go here. And notice that I selected Remove on Approach, which means that when we get really close to it, the game's just going to automatically remove it so it doesn't continue to stay on the map once we get there. It's a pretty useful thing that you can do in Imperium. 
And we might swing up here in the process and see if we could also uncover the Polaris buildings. So we'll just take a little bit of a, of a northward detour and then we'll swing down to the irradiated biome. Because um, uh, um, the Polaris are going to be really useful to us. And so, you know, I want to make sure, I want to see if that's where they're actually at because we will be visiting them in the future. Okay, so I'm going to shut up here. We'll probably do a little bit of time lapse and I'll meet you guys over at the irradiated biome. All right, we have found the Polaris trading station. Awesome. All right, um, we're going to save this for another episode, okay? Because there's a few things you're going to want to know about this place. So let's just leave it there. Now we know where it is, which is cool. Guess what else, though, guys, that I saw on the horizon? We've got a closer irradiated biome right in front of us, so we don't even have to go all the way back to that other one. Very cool. All right, so... Here, let's actually take this bookmark back off since we don't need it now. Uh, and we have this irradiated bomb right in our own back, almost in our own backyard. Okay, so we're going to make sure our weapons are selected with the one key. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do now is notice that my crosshair is kind of down inside of my cockpit when I'm in third person view. So I'm going to use the page up key and I'm going to raise my crosshair or, or actually what I'm doing is I'm raising my camera up a little bit so that my crosshair is just above the cockpit. So that way, if I shoot at something in third person, it's, you know, I can, I can see it a little bit better. Otherwise my cockpit will be blocking it. Now, most of the time when I shoot something, I'm going to be in first person just because it's a little easier to, to get a beat on something, but you know, I also want to be able to do that from here, too. Okay, we need to be really careful in this biome, because it's dangerous, as we've learned, but it also has some good resources. What we're looking for specifically is cobalt. That's silicon. We don't really need that right at the moment. We learned uh, the other day that this little blue crystal is a pentaxid crystal, because uh, we did find some of those under the water, but we don't need that right now, either. We want we, What we want to find is we want to find a cobalt stone or several cobalt stones. So we just kind of carefully scooch around here and we just look for a cobalt stone and we should find one. We might even find a promethium stone too, in which case we'll go ahead and harvest that as well. Okay, that's just a normal stone stone. So we're just going to keep looking here. There's a cobalt stone right there. Okay. Um, it looks similar to an iron stone, but it's kind of a darker, it's darker and a little rougher looking than the ironstone is. And it's a little darker blue too. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to stay, we're going to keep our hover vessel as high off the ground as it'll go. And just like we did when we were mining uh, the other day, we're going to stay on our hover, hover vessel. And we're going to hop out, we're going to pop out our drone and harvest that as quickly as possible and get back into our cockpit. We don't want to stand out there any longer than we have to because we're going to take radiation. How do I know that? If I didn't know that, take a look in the upper right-hand corner. Do you see where it says um, dot zero dot zero R for, for radiation? And then in the lower right-hand um, portion of that, you see a 4.0. That's telling me that that's what the radiation is in this environment. In other words, outside of my cockpit. The big zero zero dot R is the radiation where I'm currently located, which here is inside my cockpit. But as soon as I get out, I'm going to start taking four rats. My um, light armor is not capable of protecting me against four rats. It can only protect me up to two rats. So we are going to start taking some radiation, but it's going to it's not going to be a problem as long as we just manage this carefully. Okay, here we go. Press F to get out. We're going to stay right on top of our cockpit here. Press F5 to get our our drone out, select our multi-tool, make sure it's on resource drill, and mine some cobalt. You hear the Geiger counter going because we're starting to take radiation. We're going to pick both of those up with the F key, press F5 to put our drone away, and jump back inside our cockpit. We did not take enough body radiation to get point one, so we're good to go, but each time we do that, it's going to start to rise a little more and a little bit more. How much cobalt did we get? We got three ore. Okay, very good. We're just going to keep 
moving through um, this biome. And we're going to be careful of anything that might want to eat us or damage us or our ship. And we're going to keep looking for Promethium stones. I'm sorry, for Cobalt stones to mine them. And if we do find a Promethium stone, we will definitely mine that as well. Let's do this. All right, we found a couple Promethium stones. We're definitely going to mine those as well. Um, we're a little bit deeper now into the irradiated zone, so I just want to kind of look around really quick and make sure there's nothing that's going to try and eat me or shoot me or do other nasty things to me, because I don't like that. And then we're going to hop out here and mine both of these Promethium stones. Nice little find here. Let's also grab this one real quick. Excellent. Okay, how much did that give us? They gave us seven, seven pieces. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Let's keep looking for cobalt and promethium as we come across it. One thing that I forgot to do, uh, and I should have done, is enable the mini-map in the drone. We learned about that yesterday. So whenever you launch your drone, the mini-map does not appear until you hit the tap key and back out, and then it appears. So I can kind of be watching for drones and stuff. Um, so yeah, just don't forget to do that either. Okay, let's see where we're at. We're going to go kind of to the northeast now. Um, if you look in the upper right-hand corner now, under the body radiation, notice it says 0.1 now. Uh, we we now have uh, 0.1 body radiation. That's fine. It's not going to cause any problems for us. In fact, we won't have any ill effects at all from radiation until we hit 1.0. But we just want to be careful and make sure that we don't actually get that far. We do have a, a, a pill in case we do, but we certainly won't um, at this point in time. The other thing to keep in mind, too, is that um, I play when I play this game like do my let's plays I always play on the hardest settings and you will you will get radiation quicker um, on the hard harder settings than you will on the normal medium settings which is what we're playing here on the tutorial so if I was playing this on hard mode by now I'd probably have 0 0.4 0 0.3 0 0.4 radiation by now so remember that you know if you do decide to play on the difficult hard difficult settings I'm periodically squirting out a, a detector too, uh, just to make sure that there aren't any POIs, uh, like enemy POIs, inside the radiated zone. Sometimes the Xerax will do that, for example, or maybe the Legacy. Um, more than likely, this it would have picked something up by now, but it's just a good practice to you know keep keep being aware of your surroundings, essentially. I'm just gonna jump off and grab this one in person since it's right here. I am having some trouble with my hover vessel being too front heavy, so that's definitely something we need we need to fix, um, you know, as soon as possible. I'm surprised we haven't seen any enemies yet. Okay, let's go to the east. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, I think we are finished uh, going through this <clears throat> biome. Uh, what did we pull out in total? 27 Promethium and 34 Cobalt. That's not bad. That's definitely enough to do what we need to do and then have a little left over. Um, there is one another way that people will commonly get um, cobalt in this game, and that is to go to the moon, because the moon will usually have some cobalt deposits. We're not quite ready to do that yet, though, of course, but that is also another way, and probably uh, a better way, when you once you can do it, uh, to get cobalt, because you'll get a lot more of it than doing it this way. But this will get us started. This will get us started. There's one more cobalt stone. Let's grab that. Oops, hit the wrong thing. That's okay. We'll just do it on foot here. And that will probably be, whoops, the last time that we have to use the survival tool for mining. And maybe the last time we'll have to use it for anything. Let it be so. <laughs> Let it be so. All right. So let's go ahead, guys, and head back home. And, uh get our drill made because we've been waiting for a long time for that. That's an iron stone. Now, nah, you know what? Let's not worry about that right now. Let's just go. Oh, here's one other thing I will tell you. Once you get some gatlings on your um, your vessel, you can use it to hunt. And if you use your gatlings from your vessel, you'll still get the XP as if you killed it by hand. Um, so let's kill this guy. See, in the lower left-hand corner, I got 500 XP. Plus, I got some rep from Polaris because I killed a monster in their territory. They liked that. Um, you can also put on your vessel a turret, which we probably will do at some point. But you do not get XP for turret kills because you're not controlling it. So, uh, yeah, you, don't, you only get XP for guns that you're actually controlling yourself. But this can be a really good way to A, gather up a bunch of meat in a safe fashion, and B, get a bunch of XP. Okay, let's head on back to the ranch here. I'm just gonna, you know, use my mouse to keep my nose up so I don't dip down into the water since we're front heavy. We will take care of that um, when we start, you know, get working on hover vessels in particular i think before we we do that though guys we're gonna also we're gonna get our garden going first because we really need to improve our food situation we can't live off of cliff bars forever so we're gonna do that first and we're gonna build our landing pad too out in the back 40 before we start working on vessels so it is my intention to do those things in the next episode if all works out got some lizard mules we can kill too. Get a lot of meat and milk from those guys. Oh, he's stuck there. Yeah, I know. I'm an absolutely terrible human being for killing the baby, but you know what? I like lizard mule burgers, so deal with it. Okay. Um, sounds like we got a cricket. Kill him too. So yeah, very good way to level. Very good way to gather a bunch of meat and do it safely. Ish. Uh, using your Gatling guns once you have them on your hover vessel. Oh, there's the other ones. Not very sportsmanlike, but I would rather have food in my belly than be a good sportsman. Survival of the fittest and all that, right? Room 
Remember, I'm doing um, uh, Shift F to quick to quick loot these guys. We did cover that, but uh, that's what we're doing. That's just a normal stone. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and park right here. Uh, we don't have any reason to keep our hover vessel running until we have a refrigerator in it, so let's just cut the power completely with the Y key. And uh, there's nothing else we need to do with that because everything's in our own inventory. Let's place the perishables and the organics. We've got 23 meat. That's really good. Um, into our uh, thing. Now, because we have some milk, we can actually make cheese too. Cheese is good. Is a good top uh, topper. Topper offer <laughs> to top off because uh, it doesn't give you much food. But if you're in a situation where if you consume another steak, you're going to eat more uh, or you don't need as much food as it's going to give you, then you can eat cheese or bread or some of these lighter things to just top yourself off. Um, I'm going to at this point, I'm going to convert all of that meat just into steaks right now, um, just because we don't really have any of the other ingredients that we need to make anything better. But cheese and steaks are great thing to use in the early game. So we're just going to queue up um, like 20 of those and let's queue up like 20 cheese as well. And then we'll have cheese and steak to eat. That sounds good. Let's have some cheese right now and a little bit of steak. Remember you um, hold down shift and right click to eat something that is in uh, already in an inventory. Let's place our cobalt and our promethium in the input. And uh, now that we have uh, the cobalt, we can make what we need, the energy matrixes, in order to make the drill. I don't know if I covered this or not. In case I didn't, you need five ore, a minimum of five ore, to make ten ingots. Okay, so four ore doesn't make eight ingots. You have to have at least five. If you only have four, then you can't make any ingots at all. So that is like the minimum that you have to have. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're making stuff. Okay, why didn't I turn this off when we left? I should have. Shame on me. Let's go to the uh, weapons and tools, and look at that. We can now finally make a drill. Let's do it. Okay. Excellent. So our constructor doesn't have any of the components, or it didn't when we started, uh, to make this, so it made uh, all the, but all of the components that it did need were yellow. Remember we talked about that in the last episode, um, and so now it made all those components for us in uh, automatically queued them up essentially, so we don't have to do that. And look at our drill; it's almost done. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. This drill is so much better, you guys, than the survival tool. You can do more. It's faster. It gets more stuff. It's it's just awesome. Okay, let's grab our new drill. Um, out of here and we're going to take and put our survival tool actually you know what? we're just going to trash the survival tool if we actually need it again remember we can make one of those free of charge it doesn't cost us anything uh, but hopefully we won't have to use it anymore okay let's load up oh we got to make some charges for the drill my bad so let's go to um tools and, and weapons and we want to find uh this the drill charge this makes five per I'm going to queue up two of those so we have a total of 10, and that'll last us for quite some time. Okay, now let's turn the constructor off while we're not using it. We'll turn this one off too, just to save power. Um, and we'll grab our drill charges, and now we'll load up our drill with the R key. Excellent. Okay, guys, um, we are out of time, like way out of time. So... In the next episode, we are going to start making use of our drill and our multi-tool. And we're going to build ourselves a new wing. And we're going to use that wing to build ourselves then a farm so we can have all the foods in the whole world. Well, at least in this world. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.